Sometimes record your show. I'm on video recording it today. <laughs> this is a Dingbat's prototype on the microphone. Hi, right, Tracy. How's it going? Swell. What do you think? You, you're a great painter DJ. You're moving to the night shift. I'm okay. I'm moving to the night shift because I'm DJ. Well, that's that's as good a reason as any. <laughs> Actually, what I've done is, um, you know, because most Wednesdays I, I have free, mm -hmm. and there are some, you know, like I'm doing work on a Bluebell ice cream commercial right now, okay. and um, so some days I don't have free, and I've got Kevin Wilcox, who's on Friday night, platooning with me, so to speak, because, you know, sometimes he would like to have Friday off, so I'm just going to switch with him when I know, you know, that I'm going to be, like, the first week in June, and I'll probably be busy on this. I was going to start, um, I was going to make, like, an alternate schedule. Because during summer, some people go away. I was gonna ready. Huh? Uh, David John is on on uh, Wednesday nights from seven to ten, and you can contact him at this number from seven to ten tonight. Yeah. So what I've been doing is going around uh, auditioning people for this Blue Belt commercial because they wanted musical talent instead of acting talent. And I've been talking with a lot of blues artists that live in town, like this guy this morning, Pete Mays, who played with T-Bone Walker, or rather T-Bone Burnett. And this guy, I just got through seeing James uh, Weldon. He's, he actually was sl slipping to the back of the room and taking some hits of tequila, but uh, he, was, he was as blues as anybody I've ever seen. You know, he's just getting down. Do right, it's going to be the Bluebell Ice Cream theme song, but each line will be interpreted with a different musical style, but at the same tempo. So they've actually got a lot of work ahead of them, as far as that goes. All right. Our entire radio collection. All right, all right. Oh, I see. This is entirely. It's not copies. It's the same thing. That's the whole thing. So, how many uh, reggae albums do we have? Three hundred and sixty-seven. Three hundred and sixty-seven. Includes twelve singles and seven. Uh huh. It seemed important. There's a lot of things that we have enough of. There's a lot of records that we need to make copies of. So that's the next thing I'm going to do is go through and make a quick listing of the condition of a lot of things. Uh -huh. So a basic idea. <clears throat> well, somebody called earlier today uh, about the, uh, they, they had some jazz new age music, and I told them that Sunday and Sunday nights was a good time for that, and just, there was just no one here to talk to them, so I just what, they called to back give around us some, or? noon. And yeah, they wanted to uh, give us some. I didn't okay. get any more information than that. But I'm use a, a sonic autofocus. Right, right. It's kind of weird. Sometimes it'll it'll take a, like ten seconds before it starts to focus in, like the smiley face. So it's doing that. Oh well. Or like the uh, nipper. That's really a strange camera. I have one of those. It's uh, real nice because it has stereo plugs. Oh, okay. To record with. The machine that I have is a single plug on the camera, but you can record in stereo from the side of it. Uh huh. But uh, what was it? The uh, the Girl Scouts, where my mother works, have all these little Canon handheld cameras. They're, they require a, uh, a recorder, unfortunately, which is a shame, but <laughs> it's expensive. Radio. What do you want to hear? Yeah. 
by uh, by uh, Creme and Godly. Creme and Godly. Yeah, okay, I'll play that. Creme and Godly. Who did that song, Cry? That's a recent hit. They used to be with um, 10CC. 10 10CC. 10 Rubber Bullets. Okay. Well, uh, over at uh, Houston Center for Photography, they had a uh, demonstration Friday night of a new prototype Canon camera that records the image with, you know, 35, uh, with a 35 lens and records the image on a computer disc. Oh, yeah, video disc. And they were projecting the uh, photographs they'd just taken around the wall. And how long Probably before we'll all be able to have one of those in our home? I don't think so. I think it's a, it's a dead technology from the start. It just isn't Feasible. interesting enough. But you can, I don't think. you can go take a bunch of pictures. I mean, eventually it'll be so small, like they have small cameras now. And then you can just go home and uh, on, look on your video screen and, and bring it up on your computer and see which ones you want printed and then have them printed. And then it's an easy way to store negatives. If you could do video still technology on a videotape, I'd appreciate it more. Uh -huh. But you just can't get the resolution. Mm -hmm. on a single image. Mm -hmm. It's the f just the point of having to go out and record it on a like a three and a half inch hard floppy, one of like mm -hmm. a Macintosh disc, and stick it inside of a machine, and then transfer it through one or two steps back to your computer and maybe use it as a graphic image in your computer or something like that. I can see the usage in that. Mm -hmm. I just don't see too much use in, in video technology where there are, uh, okay, we'll call them expendable technology methods you can use now, like Polaroid or uh, transparency films right, that can right. be used. The only advantage to video is that you can see your image as you're making it and adjust it so that the correct contrast and uh, and vary the color balance of it if you want it to be varied a little bit. You can see what filtration does instantly. You can do a lot of things. Plus, when you get it back home, you can always adjust it through your computer or through your your video still machine. Uh, so there are definitely a lot of advantages. There are some advantages, but I don't necessarily think it's a large enough saleable. It's not really that saleable. Mm -hmm. I think it's a gimmick. If it were used in uh, in a professional sense somewhere else, maybe there would be a chance that it would come over to commercial, or I should say, Use. consumer usage. But mm -hmm. it just doesn't seem to me like the ex the cost of it any comes anywhere near the fun you would get out of it. Mm -hmm. It's just too expensive. Mm -hmm. Now, if there was some way of using something you could stick inside your 35mm camera and attach it to your camera, I bet you they could sell some Eventually, notes. they'll won't they, won't they uh, develop something like that, where well, maybe Canon you just have a single, a single line going into a uh, portable computer, or just going into a tape recorder. I, th I Well, I think the concept of using a video disc or, or a, a Macintosh disc and taking that and turning it into something that can be put in your Macintosh maybe, mm -hmm. or through some kind of adapter played into your computer. But I just don't see yet that they've come up with the, the thing that hits the majority of the computers, uh, the majority of cameras, in a way that people will buy them. <coughs> Tracy's on my phone. Buy them, quick, quick, chop, chop, buy uh -huh. a whole bunch of them and make the company a million dollars right away, or millions of dollars, so that it make it worthwhile to support it with a lot of accessories and the correct computer software for transferring it to your computer. And what computer will they choose? And mm -hmm. all this. It's mm -hmm. just, uh, There's just... I can't see that I'm going to spend a few thousand dollars as an accessory to my Macintosh to improve my graphic images in the Macintosh, or to use it as a sole photographic method. Mm -hmm. Radio.